our mission readiness depends on the quality of life of our family members at home. We have a specific and special responsibility and duty to lead the country as a model for the seamless transition of our children. And we know that the resilience of our military children, the experiences that they bring to our classrooms, there's just so many net positives. It really does change the culture of the school and it really enhances the experience for other students. America's military kids, they don't make America's foreign policy, they live it and neither do their parents. What extra supports do we need when a parent or both are deployed? When the assignments come, I've moved in a family estate in one location. There's certain things that dad, you know, would do and then there's certain things that mom would do, but challenging for me because I had to be that mom and that dad. When he says he's about to leave, you kind of think, what's the worst that could happen? But then when you actually think about it, it, you're like, oh, this is going to probably be hard. Like special moments that you like really want to hold on to. He missed all of it, and like he's just not there in that picture. Like in those memories when we look back. The hardest thing for us is, especially with having kids, is moving. They get used to being in one location, and they make friends, and and then it's time to move again, and then they have to give up those friends. Being little, sometimes it's really hard to go to a new place and not know anyone where everyone else that you, that's there has lived there their whole life. It's a really, really big struggle for some kids where people don't know you and in some cases people don't really want to know you. So right as soon as you start to get accepted, you have to move. You have to do it all again. I decided to always make it an adventure. Every move was something new, you're going to meet new people, you're going to learn new things. We were leaving everything we worked for behind and it kind of felt like we were losing something, but we also know we were gaining something too. And now we're seeing a lot more issues when the parents come back from uh, service overseas. How does that child deal with the baggage that the parent brings back? So they go from moving all the time then to staying in one location, but they still have that military identity. It's like you kind of try to hide it. Well, you definitely hide yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> we hide it. And you would like to have a group right there that picks them up right away, that begins their uh, process of integrating into that campus and into that culture. And that's exactly what we have here. First of all, welcome to Falcon. Thank you so much for coming. We're so happy to have you and share our group with you guys. There are the student-to-student -student programs wherever you go waiting for you, knowing what you've been through, and there to accept you and be that friendly face when you're there. It was hard to be constantly uprooted from your community and the friends that you've just made and have to go make new friends, which can be a really difficult process. Just kind of, you know, help them form relationships with other kids that, that were in their same situations, help to bring them out of their shell. When we hear s 2 like, it just makes us happy because it was that system that supported us and we can always go back to S2S. It's a really, really great club and it's doing really great things in our school. One of the best things about MSEC is the Francis Hesselbein program. It is a program where we choose the best of the best of our S2S, and they go through a week-long program learning leadership skills, learning communication skills, and learning how to interact with others. Leadership is a matter of how to be, not how to do. And I say to young people, leadership is not a destination. It's a journey and we choose our fellow travelers very wisely. The Francis Esselbein program, so much fun. I met people there once, and it was the only time I saw them was for that week long, and there's still people that I talk to to this day. They come together and they start learning about one another, and by the end of the week, they develop this close knit family that's almost indescribable. So what we know is by giving kids an organized way for service learning, then they can help any student who's a new student, not just military child. So how do you make people aware that military children really are in almost every zip code? You know, without MSEC, you know, some of the things that we've experienced 
at the very basic level for military families, like having great legislation to support us, I don't think those things would be there. The 1% of our population has any sort of service with the military, so in turn, the general public sometimes doesn't have those same understandings or concepts of what it's like to be a military child. Being in a location where you have MSET that's uh, inculcated in a part of that community just makes it that much more robust. Wonderful opportunities for our parents to learn how to best support their children's needs. I cannot imagine that we could do this work without their support. We have to have uh, relevance. So that means paying attention to what's going on. We have to have the resources. We really, really have to have a careful, you know, work to make sure our reputation is always there. Academics, advocacy, and opportunities for growth. If we're going to make it to the year 2020 and leading our children where they need to go for the future, those areas are areas we need to always focus on. The needs of kids are not going to change. The bottom line for us is, does this benefit children? When we would have bad days, just be like, wow, like this is our life. Yeah, but <laughs> it's always worked and it gets better. Yeah, it does. There'll always be a need for a military child education coalition.